y'all. Welcome back to my channel, At Home with Willowberry. Or if you're new, welcome. But where have you been? I'm so happy to see you here. My name is Valerie, and in today's video, I thought I'd bring y'all along tonight while I make dinner for my family. I'm making a delicious chicken broccoli casserole and an apple crisp for dessert. Oh, and there's lots of fur baby fun. So if you're interested, I hope you'll stick around and enjoy the video. How are you all doing today? It's a gorgeous day here in the Virginia mountains. I hope wherever you are that you're having an amazing day. It's supper time and my boys are getting hungry, so I thought I'd make a big old casserole for dinner tonight. I have two whole chickens that I'm going to bring to a boil with some seasonings, carrots, and onions. And then I'll use the chicken for the casserole and I'll have some homemade chicken broth to put in the freezer. The first thing I need to do is rinse the chicken in cold water and make sure they're nice and clean. And then I'll place them in a stock pot and cover with cold water. While I'm waiting for the chicken to come to a boil, I'm going to cut up an onion and gather the spices I'll need to season the chicken broth. I'll be using parsley, thyme, garlic powder, black pepper, bay leaves, and minced garlic, as well as onion and carrots. Once the chicken comes to a boil and I add all the seasonings, I'll cover the pot with a lid and lower the heat to low. The chicken will take approximately one hour to cook all the way through. The chicken has come to a boil, so now I'm ready to add the carrots, onions, and spices. Y'all, I really couldn't decide what to make with these chickens for dinner tonight, so once I decided I wanted to make a casserole, I then had to figure out what kind of casserole. I did a Google search and found hundreds of chicken casserole recipes and really couldn't choose just one. So I kind of combined a couple of recipes and came up with the recipe I'm sharing with y'all tonight. This casserole uses cream of chicken and cream of celery soups, as well as frozen broccoli, rotini pasta, and breadcrumbs. the minced garlic with the other seasonings, so I'm going to go ahead and add it now. Once all the seasonings are in the pot, I'll cover with a lid and lower the temperature and wait for the chicken to finish cooking. It'll take approximately one hour to reach an internal temp of 180 degrees Fahrenheit. So I have an hour to waste, so I'm going to go visit my little fur babies.
The chicken is completely cooked through, so I'm going to go ahead and remove them from the pot to a sheet pan so they can cool down. I'll need them to cool down a bit before I'll be able to remove the meat from the bones. I'm going to set the chicken aside for now and then get started making the apple crisp. I have some honey crisp apples that need to be used before they go bad. I found a recipe for an easy apple crisp on cookingclassy.com. The recipe calls for Granny Smith apples, but I think it'll be okay to use Honey Crisp instead. I'm going to peel, core, and cut the apples into small slices and set them aside while I gather up the rest of the ingredients. The ingredients that I'll need for the apple crisp are all-purpose flour, old-fashioned rolled oats, brown sugar, baking powder, cinnamon, salt, butter, apples, lemon, and vanilla extract. Once all the ingredients are gathered together, then I'll preheat the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit and butter a baking dish. I've gathered all the ingredients and buttered the baking dish, so now I'm ready to put together the apple crisp. I'm going to make the crumble topping first. In a mixing bowl, I'm going to mix together a half a cup flour, the oats, a half cup brown sugar, baking powder, a quarter teaspoon cinnamon, and a pinch of salt. I'll then add in one stick of cold butter cut into small cubes. I'll need to cut the butter into the dry ingredients until it comes together into small crumbles. Once the butter and dry ingredients are all mixed together, then I'll place it in the fridge to stay cool while I prepare the apples. The crumble topping was super easy to make. It's all ready to go and in the fridge to stay cool while I make the apple filling. 
For the filling, I'll get started by whisking together the melted butter and flour until well blended, and then I'll mix in the water and vanilla. The recipe calls for lemon juice, but I don't have any to add. Next, I'll stir in one quarter cup of brown sugar, a half a teaspoon cinnamon, and a pinch of salt. Once it's all mixed together, I'll then toss the apples into the butter mixture, and then I'll pour the apple filling into the buttered baking dish. Last but not least, I'll sprinkle the crumbled topping all over the apple filling and bake in a 375 degree oven for approximately 35 minutes or until the top is golden brown and the apples are tender. You could really use just about any fruit in place of apples in this crumble recipe. It would be good with cherries, blueberries, peaches, pears, or any combination of fruit really. I believe I'll make a peach crumble next time. The apple crisp is all ready to go. I'm going to set it aside for now. I'll bake it along with the casserole, so I'm not quite ready to put it in the oven just yet. The chicken is all cooled down, so now I'm ready to pull the meat off the bones. You don't have to cook a whole chicken for this casserole. You could use boneless chicken breasts or chicken tenders, or if you prefer all dark meat, try using chicken thighs. Whichever is your preference will work just fine. So now all the chicken meat is off the bones and it's ready to go into my casserole. I need to boil the water for the rotini pasta and steam the frozen broccoli. And then I'll be ready to put together the casserole. water on the stove to bring to a boil. 
I really didn't plan my time out very well. I should have already been boiling the water while I was pulling the meat off the bones, and I would have been one step closer to getting dinner ready. But now I have to wait for the water to boil, so I guess I'll clean up my mess and wash a few dishes. Dinner may be running a little late tonight, but at least I was able to wash a few dishes. That way there won't be too many after dinner. Well, now the water is boiling and ready for the pasta. I'm using rotini pasta in my casserole tonight. I'm going to cook the pasta and steam some broccoli. I'm just using some frozen broccoli, but you could use fresh broccoli as well. I just happen to have frozen broccoli, so that's what I'm using tonight. Same thing goes for the pasta. You could use elbow macaroni, penne, or even bow tie pasta. Just about any pasta will work in this recipe. All right, while the pasta is boiling and the broccoli is steaming, I'm going to get the sauce ready for the casserole. For the sauce, I'll be using two cans of cream of chicken soup and two cans of cream of celery soup, seasoned with garlic powder, salt, and pepper. Once the pasta and broccoli are finished cooking, I will combine them with the chicken and stir in the sauce, as well as some cheddar cheese. The sauce is ready and the pasta and broccoli have finished cooking, so now I'm ready to assemble the casserole. I drained the pasta and broccoli and I will add the broccoli to the pot with the pasta. I'll then add the chicken to the pot as well as the sauce. Next, I'll add about one cup of cheddar cheese to the chicken and pasta mixture and mix well.
Once all the ingredients are combined, I'll then transfer the chicken and pasta mixture into a greased casserole dish. I made a huge batch of chicken and pasta, so I'll make two casseroles, one for dinner tonight and one to put in the freezer. For the topping, I'm using Pepperidge Farm stuffing cubes tossed with about one stick of melted butter, which I'll spread on top of the casserole that we're going to be having for dinner tonight. stuffing cubes are on the casserole then I'll be ready to put it in the oven. It will bake for about 20 to 30 minutes in a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven. The stuffing will be golden brown and crunchy. This stuffing topping is meant to be dry. It's not a wet stuffing. I like the crunch of the stuffing with the pasta and chicken but if you prefer a moisture topping then just prepare the stuffing according to the package and then top your casserole with the stuffing and then bake. I'm going to cover the casserole that's going in the freezer in saran wrap and then aluminum foil. Sweet, sweet Max. Everyone who meets Max thinks he's just the best dog, and he really is. He makes us laugh all the time with his goofy antics, and he's just as sweet as can be. I'm so glad he found us. I can't imagine life without this special little guy. Well y'all, I dirtied up a whole bunch of dishes making this casserole. I suppose I could have just added the broccoli to the boiling pasta and that would have kept at least one pot clean. But oh well, I guess I actually have enough time to wash another load of dishes while the casserole bakes in the oven. I swear my sink never stays empty for very long. Every time I turn around there's a new dirty dish. But this time it's all my fault. I make the biggest messes when I cook, but I'm going to go ahead and get it cleaned up now.
sink is empty for now, but it won't last long. We're one meal away from another sink full of dirty dishes. Oh, how I can't wait to get another dishwasher. All right, so now I'm going to transfer the chicken broth into an airtight container and place it in the refrigerator to cool overnight. And then I'll place it in the freezer tomorrow. Looks like Supervisor Max is at it again. He's letting me know the casserole is ready. He's like, come on, lady, dinner is ready. It's been about 35 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the casserole and the apple crisp out of the oven and let everyone know that it's time to eat. Can't wait to taste this chicken broccoli casserole. It smells delicious and so does the apple crisp. serve ice cream for dinner but I wanted to show you our dessert and Tim didn't want the ice cream to melt away so he enjoyed his apple crisp and vanilla ice cream before his dinner 
But don't worry, his dinner wasn't spoiled. He still enjoyed his chicken broccoli casserole. made it in just in time for dinner. I love how Max and Willow greet him every time he comes inside. It's so darn cute. Well, anyway, we just finished dinner, and it was probably the best chicken and broccoli casserole I've ever tasted. It was creamy and cheesy, and the chicken was so tender. It was a hit with the kids, too. Even my pickiest eater enjoyed it. I'll definitely be making this chicken broccoli casserole again. So now, a few treats for the pups, and then I'll get this kitchen cleaned up for the night. It was a nice little visit with my fur babies, but I'm ready to get this kitchen cleaned up and call it a night. I haven't had any of the apple crisp yet, and I plan on treating myself as soon as the kitchen is clean. Tim offered to wash the dishes for me tonight, but he's been working so hard lately, and he deserves a night off too. So I'm going to put the leftovers away, wash the dinner dishes, and then treat myself to some homemade apple crisp with vanilla ice cream.
including all the animals, have enjoyed their dinner. The kitchen is all nice and clean. And so now I'm going to go treat myself to some apple crisp. I have some caramel dip that I'm going to heat up in the microwave and drizzle it all over the apple crisp and vanilla ice cream. I love to dip apples in caramel, so I think it will go really good with the apple crisp. Wow, y'all, it's so good. What a super easy, delicious dessert to make last minute. I will definitely be making this again. Well, y'all, I guess that's about it for another video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight while I made dinner for my family. I really hope y'all enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you in my next one. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey, y'all. I wanted to let you know about my merch shop over at Teespring. Here are some of the items you can find in my store. Sweet Willowberry. I hope you get a chance to check it out. Link will be in the description box down below.